two, three to the four. Harry J. Wall and Josh K are at the door. Ready to make an entrance, so back it up. Cause you know we're gonna fuck shit up. Yeah. When do you ever do anything but fuck your own thing? Ain't nothing but my own thing, Josh K. I'll pull a biggie with my fucking like, get a cane out of nowhere. Push the accelerator with the cane. And just be like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> For a second I thought you said we'll pull a biggie and you'll get a couple of people to pull up beside the car and shoot me like they did in Tupac. No, no. I'll get someone to ambush you in the lobby of my recording studio. Yeah, and then I release the best fucking diss track in the yeah, world. Exactly. Hit a up. <laughs> also. Space Jam hat, yeah. yeah. From Walmart, Michigan. Fuck yeah, Michigan, bro. Yeah. I have not made one of these episodes in six months because I've been over there. And you're a shit cow. I mean that too. Yeah. Insert me slapping your head. I just want it now because you're driving. I respect that. You're a bad enough driver anyway. I don't think you need the added distraction of me hitting you in the head. I'm a good driver now. I just got a job as a trucker. Watch your CB handle. I don't know what that is. You've seen Smokey and the Bandit and you don't know what a fucking CB handle oh, is? Oh, dude, I haven't seen Smokey and the Bandit since I was like 12. So I watched him fucking when he died. R.I.P. Burt Reynolds. Yeah. The fucking scene where they come upon the convoy, they fucking hide in the middle. Oh, that's so good. I love it. It's just such a fucking good scene. It's a fucking classic movie. Yeah. That film was funded independently by the director because he was just a stuntman, but no studio was like, well, do it. I'm pretty sure he mortgaged his own house. Just yeah, to pay had for a that budget movie. of like four or five million dollars. It was the, the second box. highest grossing yeah. film of 1977 after yeah. Star Wars. The Sheriff Buford T. Justice. Yeah. Oh. You son of a bitch! Get Please. back in the car, idiot. There's no way, no way that you could come from my loins. Soon as I get home, the first thing I'm gonna do is punch your mama in the mouth. One of these days, I was one, one of these, these days. days. I know, right to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting that clip in right there. Yeah. <laughs> one of these days, Alice. One of these days. Yeah, yeah, I know, Ralph. Right to the moon. That's one of the best parts of our family, I bet. One of my favorites is the worst things is what Lady Macbeth did to her husband. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know Shakespeare very well. <laughs> I always go to United Phil. They'd kick me out if I was an Asian doctor. I come back to Australia, we've gone through three Prime Ministers, Coles has banned and then unbanned plastic bags, and fuel prices are up by 20 They've banned them again. Now they're doing those, uh, biodegradable ones. Yeah, which yeah. you have to pay for, 15 cents. Yeah. Which is actually, that's a good system. But and also, like, I don't want to fucking pay for a bag. Also, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Getting high off them petrol fumes. So yeah. This is fun. Such a fucking good scene of watching that book. Oh yeah. In the book they go into a lot more detail explaining the background. The way that one scene condenses all that history over a montage with this song captures it perfectly. Yeah. Man, I'm so glad that you're happy that you got that watch me grab. Oh, it was like second or third on my list of things to buy. And then I come back yeah. having got it for you in California, like fucking perfect. Yeah. And I think I nearly bought you an action figure of Ripley from Alien 3. <laughs> <laughs> I would have fucked you with that bottle. I remember being so young and saying to my uncle, hey Richie. Is Sigourney Weaver a lesbian or does she just wear her hair like that? <laughs> I was like seven, I just thought short haired women were automatically lesbians. <laughs> Fucking hell, young Harry, you little bitch. <laughs> nah, I can stop it because I'm not tired. <laughs> That's it! Back to Winnipeg! <laughs> Respect to Sigourney Weaver and oh, the LGBTQI community though. On the topic of like. Short haired women. Shouts out to fucking Jamie Lee Curtis. She's gonna be in the new Halloween movie. Yeah. Cunt started having a go at her on Twitter. Yep. Cause she's very like anti guns. But they fucking had a go at her cause she fucking has a gun in this. It's like, it's almost like she's acting. Yeah. Some pro gun activists are more easily triggered than an MP5 at Columbine. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucked that like America gets their panties in a bunch over Colin Kaepernick being like the face of the new Nike ad campaign or over like fucking literal fucking elementary school kids getting shut up. To be fair though, I fucking love America. Shout out to Tunica, Mississippi, my favorite place in America. It's where I shot my guns. Let me see if I can find a good American song in this playlist. Oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. A, can you really argue? Ha <laughs> ha! 
like it boggles my mind a variation of the same band made fucking White Rabbit. Yeah, this is fucking Jefferson Starship. You can deteriorate that much. <laughs> and the funniest thing, people who have made this song have clearly never heard of rock and roll. Yeah, because this is the least fucking rock yeah. and roll song it's ever made. Pop. It's like, I know. Pop. We built this city. We built this city. Fuck, my voice cracked there. Okay, there's puberty round two. How, how long has it been since you've had one of those bad boys? I'm 22 now, so eight years? Bad meant a testy pop, not puberty. I think I have, may have had one pop when I was in Michigan. When I was out paddle boarding and I decided to jump By on. testy pop, I mean when like your voice cracks. Oh, That's a testy pop. not literally not, popping my testy no. pop. No. Okay. You've never heard that before? No. Oh. I mean, I've heard of balls drop, but not testy pop. You learn something new with cruising with action. Yeah, we are an educational content series. Now, fun fact: Did you know that the pool on the Titanic is still filled with water? <laughs> <laughs> they really need to get their fucking drains unplugged. That overflows much. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, this video is sponsored by Wolf Brand Cola. Wolf Cola, proud sponsors of Boca Raton. I just want to say also how glad I am to be the first cruising in action back. Yeah. Six months hiatus. Yeah. I'm gonna call this one the homecoming. Cruising in action two. Electric Bugaloo. Cruising in Action 3, Tokyo Drift. <laughs> Do you actually have a favorite episode of It's Always Sunny? Oh, I don't know, it's hard. But for me, it's definitively Philadelphia's next top model. Green man hitting D with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the billboard. Have I told you that I want to get that tattooed on me? No, you didn't actually tell me you wanted to get that billboard in your house. My second idea, which I had back in April, was to get that picture of Frank Reynolds, I should say, giving the massive thumbs up tattooed as a tramp stamp. Yeah, now I have this rule that I have to want a tattoo for a year before I decide to get it. So if by next April I still want that, then I've got no excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, brother, here's Wonderwall. Today is gonna be the day when they're gonna throw it back to you. This was the theme song for like me and my first cabin, the one I had with Mad Dog Millsy. Jordy Mills from Wanger Rider, you fucking sick cunt. Overseas, every time someone finished playing a song on guitar and everyone was done clapping, me and eventually I got the other boys doing it, would shout, now play Wonderwall! The most overused joke fucking in the history of jokes. Yeah. When I had like my initial sort of personal trainer thing at the gym. Yeah. The guy was like, so what are your sort of goals? I'm like, I want to have Hulk Hogan-esque biceps, 16 inch pythons. You just want to be no holds barred, yeah. Yeah. But well, it's a pretty good goal to aim towards. Yeah. As Millsy's dad would say, shoot for the stars even if you just reach the chimney. It's like the lowest I'll go is like 12 inch python. Exactly. Go for Hulk Hogan, you might get Randy Orton. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Watch out, watch out, watch out. I got a message from Rosie the other day, and it was a photo of a stingray holding the Infinity Gauntlet, and then a picture of Steve oh, Irwin drifting God. away in the dust, and she didn't understand it because she hasn't my seen God. Infinity War. Yeah, that was ever on. Big man. I explained the Infinity War thing. She was like, "Oh, I have an idea for a meme. You should do that with Harold Holt and the Point of Pink Ocean." And I was like, "Oh, I'm so proud of you." Marry her. <laughs> this was the song we always sang in Michigan. Almost heaven. heaven. Yeah. West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Oh, R.I.P. Mark Strong and Kingsman, man. Oh. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home. Country roads. Love you, Tucker. That is a great song, man. Oh, it's a fucking banger. Oh, yeah. It's a certified banger. Yeah, all the Michigan folks got me hooked on Take Me Home Country Road and Wagon Wheel, and I got them all hooked on Big Enough by Kieran J. Callanan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find that song, actually, because that's in this playlist. Yeah. Oh, it's the next one! Oh, fuck yeah. Classic. And this is on shuffle as well, so I have no oh. fucking clue. I don't know how Jimmy Barnes could have fucking been a part of that. Like, how? I, how? I, I don't know. Like, it's literally him just fucking screaming. I know, but the thing is, Jimmy Barnes said he thinks Kieran J. Callanan is like a true artist. He finds something about the musician that's really admirable. And it's introduced Jimmy Barnes to a whole new generation. Even if only in mean form. I know. See, Jimmy Barnes' legacy is largely that song, Working Class Man, and Not just that. Taste song. 
Bond, Flame Trees. Give me a couple of beers, I'll fucking give you a Jimmy Bond lesson, bro. Working class man was his big hit. That's a solo artist. There you go. Please. Cold Chisel is where it's at. Of course, bro. Cold Chisel. Motherfucker, please. I showed this video to my friends down in Tunica and explained who Jimmy Bond was and how he was an Australian legend. And my mate Aiden was just like, so why the fuck is he a screaming cowboy in the sky now? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, man. The fact that I have to give him a fucking outfit change as well. And the fact that he has to hold on to that hat the yeah. whole time to keep it from blowing off. Not the best way to drive. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest fucking moment in country music history. Friend I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I, I would. It's just funny how it makes literally no sense at all. You remember that time we were cruising through Westgarth with Andrew uh, Ruby and yeah. you fucking knocked over that recycling bin? <laughs> Jesus! Cheese it! <laughs> it's like not encourageable behavior. No. Kids, if you're watching at home, don't knock over recycling bin. Empty or otherwise. Be a respectful person, unlike us. Yeah. I actually got to see these guys live last year. Oh, true? Yeah, my dad surprised me with tickets to oh, said, fuck yeah. Shout out to Big Dave. Fucking Big Dave, he's a legend. I actually got duped into doing this at karaoke down in Mississippi. My friends, they got their partners and they started slow dancing while I was butchering an Aerosmith song. Like, bless their hearts. I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep cause I miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss a thing. I took over a pair of shoes that had died years ago and my grandma had sewn them back up and I put them in the cupboard forgot about them. And I was like, you know what, now I'm going to take those over and make them last. When I had to explain to people why I was walking around with shoes with massive holes in them instead of just buying a new pair, I was like, nah, I'm treating these shoes like a necrophiliac. They're already dead, but I've dug them up to fuck them one more time. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And they lasted until the end of Philadelphia, so four and a half months. Oh, shit. Yeah. I could have made them last longer, but after all those kickboxing classes, they were wrecked and I just didn't want to carry the extra luggage. So on the subject of this movie we're going to see, do you actually know anything about ghost stories? Oh, no. Me neither. Free shit's free shit. Exactly. I think it's an anthology horror film. I get the feeling Martin Freeman may be in a King for Monster Fest this year. Their opening picture is the new Mel Gibson Vince Vaughn movie, Dragged Shit. Across Concrete. And I think it's about two police officers who are suspended for being abusive towards their prisoners. Oh. And they have to like infiltrate the criminal underworld or something. But will it be the infamous? Give me back my son! It will not. Give me back my son! Nothing Mel Gibson Nothing ever though. does will beat that. Will it stop? No, no, the song finished. Oh. Fucking dickhead. <laughs> Shut up. Did I tell you the fucking Palmer Palmy story? An Australian oh. friend of mine by the name of Georgia Oakley, G Money as I like to call her. When I met this girl, me and Lockie, we interrogated her to figure out how Australian she was. We tested her on three subjects. The first one was, we said to her, 1300. 65506. Yep, ding. He passed number one. Then you have to finish the sentence. Have you ever? Uh, uh, uh fine. Been around the twist. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna play that one. But you I can't say, remember it. Hey, felt like this. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I can't remember that. Now you get half a point. Then the third question. Is it a Palmer or a Palmer? Oh, there's no thought even, it's a Palmer. No, she had to think. And then she said Palmy, and we turned our backs on her straight away. So... Well, let me tell you something. Giant... The mother... Dude! Dude! Sorry, that's a... It's a hot topic, alright? It's a hot topic. I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> what do iguanas have to do with it? <laughs> hey, my blood's up, all right? You're untethered and your rage knows no bounds. I am untethered and my rage knows no bounds! I need my tools! As the story goes, over the next two months, I kept sending her memes about how, if you call it a palmy, you are intellectually disabled. My co-counselor walks in with a letter and says, Harry's got a love letter. And I'm like, wait, what? Because for one thing, no one's going to write me a letter. And second of all, a love letter, really? So, yeah. I check it, there's a stamp on the top right that says love, and oh, that's where he gets it from. I check the back, and it's come from Girls Camp. I'm like, who could be writing me from Girls Camp? I have one idea in my head, but I don't think it's letter worthy. No. I open it up, and it literally says, it's a palmy, Georgia Oakley. And I've never oh. been simultaneously so happy and so angry at the same time. So, after two months of civil war about how it's either a palmer or a palmy, when it's a fucking palmer, she tells me, Harry, I've got a secret to tell you. I've been lying to you for two months. I think it's a palmer. 
I was just so fucking proud of her. She fucking played me. Okay, let me just say that long beeping wasn't actually me swearing at you. The audio underneath that was this. And then what I want you to do is just like add one like giant beep onto this. Okay. Okay? So it looks like I'm cussing the motherfucker out, but in reality I'm just telling you to beep this out. Fucking iguanas. Hey, they ugly sons of bitches, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we went to Bartronica. I was just standing outside smoking as I do. No one else was smoking with me, I was just like this, you know? Yeah. This, you know, sort of very like expressionless look on my face. This Irish chick comes up, it's like, are you security? I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm just, you know, having a cigarette. You should have told her you were security and that was a five dollar entry. Yeah, true. So I'm sitting in a bar with Lockie and my friends Daniel Penley and Daniel Pavey. Out of nowhere, Lockie starts talking in an Irish accent just to be funny. We start doing these Irish accents. We're doing them for three hours by this point, so it becomes our natural manner of speaking. So Daniel Penley and Lockie are just like, hey Harry, should you go up and ask that girl for a number? And I'm like, no way. And they're like, dude, what have you got to lose? And I'm like, all right, I go up and start chatting to her. Turns out she's married. Lockie, of course, knew this the whole time and was trying to bait me into hitting on a married woman. How did Lockie know? He saw her chatting with her husband oh. and then he went out to have a smoke. Chatting with her, the husband comes back in. He's the nicest guy. He introduces me to his friends over on a table. Lockie comes over at some point. We start making up stories about coming from Ireland and all this stuff. And these guys are laughing so hard at us, they buy us a free pitcher of beer. Lockie, of course, doesn't drink beer, so I drink all of his. Really? Yeah, he drinks cider. <laughs> Do you not perceive the emotions people put in the words? Do you not shut the fuck up ever, you dumb fucker? Of course I don't shut the fuck up ever, you dumb fucker. It's me. Fuck off, bud. Fuck off, no! The fact you're a dumb cunt is confirmed. Dude, that was confirmed long ago. Yeah, if you look up the word dumb cunt in the dictionary. You'll find the, the definition of, of dumb cunt, which I am. There's a picture of Harry. Man, I really wish it was. You know what's my favorite threat now? What? I'm gonna put my thumb through your eye, you little bitch. <laughs> Just cause Rob McElhenney said it. I'm gonna put my thumb through your eye, you little bitch! No, no, no. Fat Mac is the best Mac. Like, he's fucking shredded now, but like, when he was cultivating mass, it was like, really attractive fat. Because it's more of like a pot belly rather than like, weight. Yeah. You know? And the thing I love about Rob McElhenney, he got fat just because he could. And then yeah. he got shredded Cause, like, just because um, he could. The thing in like, TV shows is the characters get uh, hotter over time. You want to like, break that trope, but like, get fat. And do the complete opposite? Yeah. yeah. You gotta pay the troll toll. If you, you wanna, wanna get, get in that voice hole, hole, you gotta pay the troll toll to get in. Danny DeVito is just a, my favorite human being. Oh, fuck yeah. Like that story about fucking when he was shooting Batman and the fucking like monkey took a fucking bite out of his nuts. Oh my god, oh, that's yeah. that's so good. Man, I remember you posted that on my wall when I was working at Blues Fest and I literally spent that entire weekend telling strangers how much I love Danny DeVito. J-Man. Ah! Oh, fighter of the night, man. Ah! Oh, champion of the sun. Ah! Oh, you're a master of karate and friendship for everyone. Alright, so now we are off to see ghost stories. <laughs> Thoughts on ghost stories, what did you think? It was a good concept for a horror film. With any anthology film what you get, I find some of the stories are good and some of them aren't that good. And usually the second one's the weakest because it's like the middle chapter. Definitely was. Definitely the case. There were anthology films that were connected by a loose narrative, and that loose narrative ended up being like the key, the underlying element in the story. Yeah. And I just felt like that was the focus, whereas the short stories themselves weren't all that good. Like, they were well made, the atmosphere was good, they were well done, but I kept wondering, like, what was the point of all of them? And it made sense in the end, but I felt like they spent too much time on those short stories. Yeah. If you made them shorter and you put more focus onto the main character, I feel like I would have been more invested in the story because they would have made it more clear that the focus was on him. But instead, I feel like they kind of did a bit of a bait and switch type thing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But at the same time, I didn't fucking see the ending coming. It definitely took a clever twist. It was well acted, it was very well made. Like, music, the sound editing, and the cinematography was all really good. I just feel like the way it was structured could have been a bit better. It was okay, I'll give it that. It was definitely worth the zero dollars and zero cents we paid for it. Yeah, and the free tickets we got out of it. Yeah. And hashtag, yes! And <laughs> the faces we ran into. Hashtag, squatting slab and track suits, Victoria DePauli. Boom, love that girl. Hashtag to Mel Maloko. Hashtag, Andrea Linforth, hashtag Mook Skeleton Naughty Bones, hashtag that one girl I met on Tinder that one time and is also on my Snapchat that happens to be a burlesque dancer who I've never actually met in person. Alternatively, you could just say hashtag Louise because I'm pretty sure yeah. that's your name. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Monster Fest, bro. I love it when I'm playing comics together. Dude, if we were the A team, you would totally be John Hannibal Smith. Jaden would be Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> I look like he's black. <laughs> yeah. I'd be Murdoch because I'm off the fucking chain. I wonder if they legalize marijuana if that would actually have any effect on how much people are using ice. Because marijuana at the moment is a Legal to get it, you're dealing with that element. Yeah. But if you can go to a marijuana store to buy it, then you're sort of taking away the criminal element. Yeah. You know, so they're not going to be offering like, hey, you want to try this? You want to try that? That's true. Getting into marijuana wouldn't be getting you into the drug underworld. It'd be just like going out for a drink. 
because marijuana is very much so legal and open in Amsterdam, when they sort of first legalized it, other narcotics crimes related to that fell. But I mean, it makes sense. She just cruise home, crack open those bottles of coke, uh, pull out a tin of baked beans and watch cars too. <laughs> 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 but make sure you don't store that shit. I've actually got to find a church where I can shoot us in for that movie me and Sandra are making. Yeah, man. You're gonna play God, aren't you? Yeah, but like the Prophet Muhammad, praise be upon him, you know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, that's actually gonna be fucking dangerous if I depict Muhammad, though. You just don't like say it's Muhammad. Like, no, it's just God, he's just dressed as a Arab henchman. Like, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Loophole. I should not have to worry that doing that is gonna put my life in danger. I doubt some fucker's gonna care though, like, this fucking white boy over here? I'm probably just gonna piss off white knights and social justice warriors. Yeah, as a Middle Eastern person. Whatever the fuck you want, bro. And if they come after me, you know, I just need you to come up and say, hang on, he has one Middle Eastern friend, so he gets one free pass. Yeah. That's like the law, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. In America, Caucasian people throw the N-word around. Yeah, yeah. But you say cunt and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Fuck up, cunt. Yeah. One thing I learned from working with Scottish people at camp, they think they own the right to that word. Fuck up, cunt. Exactly. When I got off the plane in Australia and started hearing Aussie accents again, it was so fucking refreshing. I bet. It's fucking five months, bro. They were great down in Mississippi. It's a really cool accent, the one they've got. If I didn't have an Australian accent, I'd want to have a fucking Cajun accent. I would go Maori. Just, um, cruise down the street here, bro. I'm just, uh, gonna turn down my road. Oh, shit. Struggling to see the road up ahead. It's a bit dark. Gotta get my lights on. And that's where we wrap it. Peace out, motherfuckers. This nigga eating beans!